الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغيروا ما بأنفسهم وإذا أراد الله بقوم سوءا فلا مرد له وما لهم من دونه من وال صدق الله العظيم as we stand at the doors of the month of ramadan which is we know is the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just opening the doors of Jannah for all of us and clothe, closing the door of Jahannam. Something that every Muslim knows this about Ramadan. فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ Allah opens the door of Jannah and He closes all the doors of Jahannam. What does that mean? His Rahmah is wide open now. He's ready. He's ready to receive us with open arms that you know the Jannah is just open for you. Anyone wants to go to Jannah, make your way there. Doors are open. Doors of Jahannam are closed. So what is it that I need to do now? As Allah is opening the doors of His Rahmah on me, He's closing all the doors of adab and punishment for the Ummah. What should I do, Ya Allah? Change yourself. Just change yourself. Take advantage of this special opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessing us with. That's all. إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم. Allah will not change the situation of any nation until they are ready to change themselves. Ramadan will come and go. Situation will not change if we don't change ourselves. So Ramadan is coming. Doors of Rahmah are open. Allah is just showering His Rahmah and blessings. Are we ready to receive it? What plans have we made to receive that Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? To receive the special blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If we are having a delivery to our home, it's a freezer. We all plan where are we going to put the freezer? Which door is going to come in from? How are we going to take it there? How are we taking the other freezer out? Where are we going to put that one? Ramadan is coming. What plans have we made for Ramadan? The time of the Rahmah is coming. What plans have we made to receive that Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The month of Maghfirah is coming. What plans have I made to receive the Maghfirah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
Allah have opened the doors, but he is not going to push us in through the door. He says, Hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusim, unless you are ready and willing to change yourself. And if we are ready and willing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'm ready to give you more than what you could ever expect. During this past year, how many people that we know have left this world unexpectedly? We didn't expect and they didn't expect it. They're gone. They will not be getting this Ramadan. We don't know where this world is going. But one thing for sure, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he talked about the signs of Qiyamah, which we see, all the signs are out there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, one of the things that will happen just before Qiyamah, Mawtul Fuja'a, sudden death. He says that will be one of the signs, Qiyamah is drawing very near now. Mawtul Fuja'a, sudden death. And we, I'm sure all of us, within our families, within our circle, we know people that we did not expect for them to leave so soon. And they're gone. And maybe next Ramadan, people will remember us and will say, Rahmatullahi alayhi. Sudden death. The sudden death Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, for a sinner is akhdatul asaf. It's a way of just making the person pay for all of his wrongdoings. And for a mu'min, it's a death of rahmah. Imagine a person dies during this Ramadan. There is two type of death. We call it Khatima bil khair. Dies a good death. Which means he is received by the malaika of rahmah. That is a good death. And the other is the death when the malaika of adab come and receive the soul of this person. Imagine God forbid, if a mu'min dies during the month of Ramadan, but that was a death when the malaika of adab will come to receive him. That even during this month, you didn't do enough. Your plans, your intention wasn't there for the pleasure of Allah and for a change in your life. That if you are dying, the angels of Adab are coming to take your ruh. So if we ask our souls, only Allah knows when we leave. But if I was to leave during this month of Ramadan, would I be ready? COVID is scaring everyone. And people, of course, we have to be careful, but how many people are scared of dying of COVID? But do we know that it is certain that we all have to die regardless of this or any other reason? That's for sure. We will die for sure, regardless of the reason. Say, if that time comes during this Ramadan, are we ready? And do we think with our plans, with our intention, and the steps that we are taking for the preparation of Ramadan, that insha'Allah, malaika of rahmah will be receiving us. We will be dying with kalima on our tongue, reciting, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah, as we are leaving the world. It will come by a change. It will not come just by thinking about it, by hoping for it. It will come 
if we take the right steps towards that change. The person who killed 99 people, very well known hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari, and he was told, if you would really want to be forgiven, you cannot be just forgiven like this, saying, Ya Allah, please forgive me and continue doing what you're doing. Go to another town where there are people who are busy in the ibadah of Allah. Spend some time over there. That will bring a change in your life. And through that, you can be forgiven. And he took those steps. He was going there. He died on his way. As he took these steps, didn't change yet took these steps towards the change, he passed away, Malaika of Rahmah of Rahma received him, and he went straight to Jannah. Have we taken those steps now? Ramadan is ahead of us. Say if we die today, can we be in the same situation that we are taking these steps? We don't get the, Rahm, uh, the Ramadan. We couldn't do nothing about it if we die before it. But Malaika will witness for us that he was going into the right directions now. He was changing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us shayateen will be chained during the month of Ramadan. And therefore, even shayateen know this. They get chained every Ramadan. So what do they do? This is the time. This is the time when they would work very hard to make sure they put us in the wrong direction. And if you want to see what we are talking about, see the countries that we call them Muslim countries. What's happening over there right now? All the preparations for the month of Ramadan, new movies are being launched. New programs, shows. So now everyone is planning on which theater they are going to go, which movies they would watch during the nights of Ramadan. And this is not happening on a small scale. They're trying to drive the whole country into that. All the new songs coming during the month of Ramadan. Shayateen are trying to pull people away. That even when they're chained, they already put people on that direction. And then, we see our souls. Didn't change our habits. Ramadan came. Same thing going on, on those devices. I need to pass time. I'm getting bored now. The person is getting bored doing the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he has to entertain himself by watching a movie. Where he's going to just lose all the nur of the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just one look. One look of that haram on your screen will make you lose all the nur of the ibadah. No more connection with the salah. No more concentration in ibadah. Why? The nur of ibadah is gone through that haram. We can't live without looking at that haram. We can't live without listening to haram. Hatta yughayiru ma bianfusihim unless we change ourselves. It's time for change. And remember, when you look at yourself, we may think, who am I? What I'm going to do? You mean a lot. Each and every one of us, regardless of your age, regardless of your position, it's not about what education we have, what degrees we have, what work we have, where we live. None of that is just your own sincerity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change everything. Look at quick examples here. Umar radiallahu anhu. Look at the family of Umar radiallahu anhu after Islam. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu. Hafsa Ummul Mu'mineen. 
Umm al-Mu'mineen, the mother of believers, the daughter of Umar radiallahu anhu. And then you look at that generation after Umar radiallahu anhu, how many great scholars came in that family of Umar radiallahu anhu, from Sahaba to Tabi'een to Taba' Tabi'een, including Umar ibn al-Abdul Aziz rahmatullahi alayhi. If we look at Umar radiallahu anhu before Islam, and he looks at himself and he says, what can I do? It's one person changing could change the whole family. One person changing could change the whole history. Surah Al-Buruj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about one child, one child. Change the whole nation. Change the nation where believing in Allah was a crime. One child changed the whole nation. That is the story of Surah Al-Buruj. He was a child. Nine, ten years old child. Change the history. Through his iman. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Look at his family. Look at the achievements of that family. What brought all of the change? It's one person, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, decided to change, accepted Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, followed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah brought iman into all of his progeny. His parents also accepted Islam through him. And then we have Sahabiyat. A Sahabiyya would come, a woman would come accept Islam. Then the whole family will come into Islam. There are so many examples of that. There is a well-known hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari. An old lady who was traveling, Sahaba were traveling at the same time. She had two containers of water. I don't know, hopefully you remember the hadith. She had two containers of water. Sahaba were looking for water, they ran out of the water. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent some of them, go and look for water. They found that lady asked her, where did you get the water from? She said, I brought it from a distance of three days. It's too far. We can't wait three days. Our people are going to die. Come with us. Where? To Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh, that person who is taking people away from the faith, who is misleading others. This is what she said, that is sabi. That person who, took, who went away from the religion of his forefathers, she said, yeah, come. And they said, come, come with us. They took her there to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam opened the containers, recited something. He blew into the containers. He closed them. He opened the tap. He says to Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa now we start using the water. All the Sahaba are using the water, drinking from the water, and then they are giving it to their camels, to their, to their animals. And she is standing over there. I'm losing all of my water. My children are waiting over there. And it's a distance of three days. I have to go back three days. Come back three days. My children. Who's going to take care of them? And she says, after they used the water, all of them used it. And when they closed the container, I went and I looked into my container. It was more than I filled it before. She went back to her nation. Now, this is the main part. She went back to her nation. And she said, all my people accept Islam. This one lady accepted Islam, changed the whole nation, brought them into the Islam. Most of us, those of us who may be considered religious people, that mashallah, this family is very religious, religious family. Regardless of what things we do, but people may be looking at us as because of some things that we are doing that this is a religious family. Look at the family. How long ago that we were really religious? Maybe one person in the family changed, connected to the masjid, started coming to the masjid, started helping this masjid, and started helping the ummah, and all of a sudden the whole family changed. This is the whole history. Imam Nawawi rahimahullah, who doesn't know the name? Imam Nawawi rahimahullah, he says, we were not into this field. His father was a scholarly person, but 
they did not specialize in this. He says, a person came to visit, but my father was very well connected to the scholars of Islam. He says, once a pious man came to our town and he stayed with us, that man, he put his hand on my head, he moved his hand over my head, and he made dua for me, and he said to my father, see the nur on his face, make sure you put him into this field. Let him learn Quran and Hadith. He changed the whole family. Imagine the work that Imam Nawawi rahimahullah did after that. One person changing will change everything. Today we may be that person. Who knows? Allah is allowing me to say these things in your presence through your barakah, that Allah will choose some of us and hopefully all of us, that we be that one person that will change and through us, our families will change and nations and generations to come will change. It's just one person. One person changing. And initially we'll, be have, we'll have to go through hardships, difficulties. But that change, inshallah, will be a long lasting change. And you will get sadaqa jariyah. That will be the best sadaqa jariyah for you. That you change and then your family changes through you. Many of us, if we have a half is in our family, look at your family. How many hafaz did you have before this generation? I'm telling you personally, I'm my own family, people look at us maybe religious family. Whatever we are doing on the surface, wallahu alam, may Allah accept. But my brother was the first person who became an alim in the family. Before that, only business. My father was traveling after he finished his MBBS as a medical doctor. So now he's going out as a celebration. He's going on a holiday. So a friend of him just said one word to him. He said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to those places. He said, in that city, there is a scholar. Visit him also on your way. So he said, I wasn't of that person. I wasn't that type of person who would visit the scholars. I was running away from them. So he said to me, you know, just is a very well-known muhaddis of our time. At least go say salam to him. He said, I went there. I shook hands with him. As soon as I shook hands with that man, I felt that something changed in my heart. I don't want to tell you family history. But the point is, this is where the change come from, come from. And now, alhamdulillah, every person in the family, maybe over a thousand people in the family, children in the family, are hafaz. Just because of one person changing, you could be that one person. Let's take it upon ourselves, that I will be that person, and this Ramadan will be the time. That's all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us for that. This is the time of the rahmah. This is when we say doors of the rahmah are wide open. Wide open. All of us are there that can be ex uh, accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is not rejecting none of us. It is only if we are willing to go for it. So let's plan. Let's move forward with our Quran, with our ibadah. The most important thing is Humbling our souls. Remember this. Humbling our souls and presenting our souls with that broken heart of what we have done in the past. And Ya Allah, the way I'm living, the way I have put my life, I have wasted time. Ya Allah, I didn't do nothing for your deen. Ya Allah, now accept me, accept me for this. Come to Allah with humbleness and learn to humble yourself before your Rabb. Shed your tears before Allah Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah can change anything and everything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of us.